Did you know that there's a way that you can control the invisibility effect? Today I will show you a technique how you can control this invisibility effect and combine it with a little motion graphic. For this effect I've prepared this clip where I have my Lego Porsche here and I pretend with my hand like I'm making the effect stronger and then I go out of the frame. And this is the shot that we need. Then we need a second shot, only the clean plate, so I go further in this clip, I take away the, the Lego Porsche and then I only pretend with my hand like I'm controlling the effect. But you don't need that, I just did it for safety reason. We just need a clean plate like here. So we cut that right here and freeze this frame right here. Then we stack these clips above each other. So up here, this clip is the video where I'm pretending like I make the effect stronger. And the clip underneath is just a freeze frame from the clean plate. These are the shots we need. And before we jump into Fusion, we set some markers. So here my hand comes in, then I'm tapping two times onto the table. And on the second tap, I want here a hologram to appear where I can change the strength of the, of the effect. So I set here a markers, make sure it's up here on the timeline. Go further than from here. As soon as my finger starts going up, I set a marker. Then as soon as it stops, here I need a marker. Then as soon as I go further, right here, I need a marker. And when I'm at the end point here. These are the markers we need for this effect so we can make the, the hologram and the, the invisibility animation exactly to our movement. So now we take these two clips and create a new fusion clip. Go to the first frame and jump right into fusion. First delete the merge nodes and the background. Then here click on the left dot so we can see which clip it is. So this is the freeze frame and this one should be with the Porsche, right? Then I connect the Porsche to the media out and with nothing selected I hit shift and spacebar and type in magic mask and then I make a second connection from the Porsche to the magic mask. Select the magic mask, click on the left dot so you can see what you are selecting. Then draw a line over your subject. Maybe you need to adjust it a little bit and then just track it back and forth. Once your tracking is finished, hit shift and spacebar and type in this place. Then make sure the magic mask is plugged in with the green input. We need to have the magic mask on the foreground. Then plug the clean plate into the yellow input and connect the displace node here with the Porsche. And now you can see our Porsche disappeared. Select the displace node and play around here with the light power. And you can see our Porsche is invisible now. I won't go further into detail how to adjust and refine everything. I made a separate tutorial for this where I go very into detail. So I just leave it like that because I want to show you the technique behind this. So and now you can see we have here our Porsche on the clean plate but our hand is not visible here. Select here the polygon mask and plug it into the blue input of the merge node. You can see everything's back. Now we just need to draw a mask like so and you have both things in the same frame so this is the secret how you can combine the invisibility effect and how you can control it in the same frame maybe you need to adjust the soft edge here a little bit so the cut is not so strong but in this example it looks perfect so you can see i'm pretending like i'm controlling the invisibility and the porsche is invisible Open up your splines up here with the spline window so you have down here your markers visible. Deselect everything you have here, you don't need that. Select the merge node, then go here. On this marker the hologram will appear and then from here on we make the Porsche visible. So here on the second marker it's at zero, so I go with the merge selected over here to settings, set here a keyframe. Go further to the second marker, then here the strength is maybe somewhere around here. Then the next marker I set just a keyframe, no adjustments. And here on the last marker we have it all the way visible. So what we created is here 
it's fully invisible, then it goes up and further up. And now we click here on this little icon, zoom to fit, select everything with Ctrl or Command A and press F. Don't press S because when you press S you have here the curve and we don't want that. Press F so we have here a straight line. Then we don't need the merge node, deselect it here from the splines and close them. So far so good, but now we create here a little motion graphic to make this even more engaging. To do this motion graphic we need here the background, just select the color you want to have, in my example it's this darker orange, and plug a polygon node into it. Then with the background node selected, here take the multi-merge node, not just the merge, take the multi-merge, I will explain a little bit later why, and plug it into the merge node. We make here a little bit more space. Select your polygon and now it's up to your creativity how you want to have the shape of this little graph. I just do a triangle shape, something like so, to have it clearly visible. What I like to do is I give a little bit of soft edge, so I don't like it when it's so, so edgy, so I give a little bit here of a soft edge. And what I also want to have is a text. I plug it into the multi-merge and I type here in visibility. Select the font, the size, everything you want to have. Now this is pretty rough the design I want to have. Here under the multi-merge I hit shift and spacebar, type in soft glow and now you see everything you have up here is affected from this soft glow. This is the reason why we created this multi-merge. So down here with this glow we can adjust both at the same time. Then you see the angle of the camera so it's a bit tilt down and we want to do the same thing so we connect it with a DVE node and then here with the rotation X axis we can flip it over and position it in our scene so it matches with the angle of the camera. And to make it even more realistic, hit shift and spacebar and we add a drop shadow. Here once again, adjust it until you're happy with the look of it. And you can see with only here this drop shadow, it makes a huge of a difference into the scene. So this is a result I like pretty well. When you're happy with your little graph, we need to make the movement aligned to our finger. So here we go up, so we want here the graph to go up like around 50% and at the end to 100%. And we can do this with a rectangle mask. Take it and plug it into the blue output here of the multi-merge. And now when I move this mask, you can see only the text disappears, but not the, the shape. So we can avoid that by putting here the background into the white input and the text into the yellow input. So select this multi-merge, press Ctrl or Command T to switch the inputs. Now you see the text is on the yellow and the background on the white. Now when I take this rectangle, it only affects here the shape. But now we have no outline. We can do it very easy by selecting here everything except for the text and the rectangle mask. Copy it over with Command or Ctrl CV. You can delete the multi-merge plug the background here into the soft edge and reconnect here the media out so we have this tree inside here. Select here the second polygon mask and we don't want to have it solid, we only want to have the outline. So deselect the solid and give here a little bit of a border width and you can see here it comes back. And now when we select here the rectangle and I play around here with the strength you can see it fits perfectly. What I see here, we can delete here the shadow, we don't need it here. And now we just need to align it with the movement of my finger. So once again, open up the splines so we have our markers visible. Deselect everything that's selected here, we don't need it. Make sure your rectangle is selected. Then here on the first marker it appears, we don't need to make anything here. Here on the first one, we start at zero. So we just put our mask down here. So it's all the way down at zero. Here at center, X and Y set keyframe. Go to the next marker, 
put it up to around 50%. Go further to this marker. Here also set the keyframe, no adjustments. Go to the last one and here we're all the way up on 100. So now we have here this graph aligned to our finger. Play around here with the curve. I like to smoothen them once again with command or control A and F. And just play around here with the curve until it matches. But in this case it looks perfect. What I also like to do is here I give it a little bit of a soft edge. So here this is not so edgy when I zoom a little bit in. Here it's very edgy, so I want to have this a little bit smoother. And now we only need to make here the start animation when the, the hologram appears. So here I tap twice on the table and here on this marker I want it to appear. So on this tree here, down here, I hit shift and spacebar and type in transform. And then we can make this animation here with the size. And you see now it goes up here to, to the center and we don't want that. So we go here to the pivot and just set the pivot here in the center of your, your motion graphic, of your, of your little graph, somewhere around here. So now when you play with the size, it gets smaller here to this center point and this looks way better than somewhere around up here. So we set here on this marker a keyframe, put it down to zero and now we go one, two, three, four, five, six frames further and put it back to one. So here when I tap it appears. And what we want to have is over here settings motion blur all the way up because we love motion blur. Then deselect here the rectangle, zoom to fit and smoothen this curve here. Then with pressing T you can open up here the ease in and ease out and put it to around 80. So it starts very fast and then goes very slow. So when you watch it we have a very smooth animation here from this text. And to have it over here on the outline of this little graph just take this transform node, command or control C or control V so we have it plugged inside here so both of them are coming up and then we adjust it and that's pretty much it this is the secret how you can control the visibility effect combined with a little motion graphic with that said have fun creating and see you in the next one <laughs>